So today I wanted to talk about a concept or a technique that I tend to use pretty often that can really help add to props and models. I would call it like procedural painting basically, where you're combining hand painting textures and stuff mixed with proceduralism in order to add some extra realism. So for this object specifically, I'm thinking edgeware is probably the best kind of thing to go for. And if you don't know how to make edgeware, I'll show you real quick. It's very simple. First, a bevel node and a geometry node. Next, you can add a vector math node, set it to dot product, then plug the normal into the bottom slot and the normal of the bevel into the top slot. Next, we can add a map range node and plug the dot product value into the value of the map range. Now, generally what I like to do is flip the two min and the two max values. Next, all you have to do is plug this into a mix color node, and then you can use it as a factor for the mix, and it allows you to mix your original image texture with something new. We can add in a math node plugged into the radius of our bevel, and we can duplicate this math node, set this one to multiply, set this one to multiply as well, and then add a noise texture and plug it into the first value. That way we can use this scale and essentially make a bit of a more interesting noise pattern. As you can see, changing this multiply value changes how much this spreads, and changing this one changes the influence of the noise texture. Now, if you bring this from min value up closer to this uh, from max, we'll end up making a sharper edge. And as you can see, now we have this sharp edge that we can then bring inward or outward and essentially change our pattern. So now that we have this done, we have our mask. But this is not super realistic. So if I wanted to add maybe a rust texture and I set up my rust so it's like this and it's plugged in there, you can see it wraps all the way around and it's nice, but uh, the edges are all rusty and you don't really want that. You want to be able to have some areas that are rusty and some that are not. So what you can do is basically procedurally paint this. Right now we have this procedural rust texture that's appearing. So generally what I like to do in order to make this work is duplicate this mix color node and we'll put it before this mix color node. Now we're going to set our mix color to multiply and turn the factor all the way up. And I'm just going to set this to a black value for now. And as you can see, all of our edge wear goes away. And if we preview, that's because we have all black. If we have white, then you'll see that we still have that noise and the mix between the two. So essentially, all we have to do from here is add in a new image texture, click on new, make our new image texture, we can call it mass, and plug it into bottom value, this B value. What you may want to do is go to the data properties, open up a UV map, and create a new UV map. That way we can press UV map and assign it to the one we just created, and use that as our vector mapping for the mask. Then we can just take everything, go to the UV editor, select it all, and choose smart UV project. Give it a very small island margin like 0.001 and click unwrap. Now, finally, we can jump into the texture paint. Make sure your mask is selected and wherever we paint white is the only places that this stuff is going to appear. So you can just randomly choose spots to paint on and just basically choose where you want all this rust to be. Next, what we can do, we can just preview it and we have rust around these areas. Now, this area got painted for some reason. That is unfortunate, but you get the idea. Essentially, now we have rust only in the areas that we've painted and it can just add a little bit more realism without as much work, which is always nice. Now, one really nice thing about this method is it doesn't even have to really apply to painted materials. You can mix it with just proceduralism as long as you have some sort of mask built in. So for example, let's say I just wanted to carve out some random parts of these bricks and make them white. First, what we could do is add a mix color node, set to mix, and we'll choose this white texture, or we can use our original brick texture and grab a hue saturation value node and turn down the saturation. That way we just have these white grayish bricks like this. Next, what we could do is add in a noise texture to control the factor, give a color ramp, and I could set it to constant so there's no blend between the two. You may want to set up your noise texture using object mode so that everything normalizes and is uh, the proper size. And finally, we have this as our mask. But once again, we can add a secondary mask by grabbing a mix color node. We can set it to multiply if we want, turn the factor all the way up. And then if we plug our original brick image texture in through a color ramp, we can bring these values closer together like this and flip them so that we have something more like this. Plug this into the B value. And then you'll see we have this mask mixed with our brick mask. That way this white won't affect the actual bricks. And we could, if we wanted, make it any sort of color that we want. So I could turn up the saturation on here and it's not going to affect the rest of the color. As you can see, I can change the overall hue and just basically make anything that I want. So 
if I turn the value down, I can make it a brown, bring the saturation down, and then we just have these brick pieces that are slightly discolored from the rest using just a simple mask. Now, if you wanted to be a little bit more artistic and pick and choose where you wanted this kind of stuff to happen, you could always delete this noise texture, add in your own image texture, and do what we did with the last setup. It's super easy and super fun to do. And for a lot of the quick layers add-ons that I have, you can add custom masks as you can see here. So for example, I could just stack a bunch of stickers on top of here, create my own custom mask, and then pretty much just paint exactly where I want these stickers to appear. And I've got a bunch of procedural things that are working with me in order to make this a little bit more interesting. So it's a fun concept. I use it all the time and it's a great way to add extra detail to your models without as much work. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully you've learned something. If you have, leave a like, leave a comment, and let me know what you want to learn about next.